Hello, everybody. Welcome to Ms. Stephanie's house. Thank you. So um, I ordinarily start with a song. And um, I've been very sick this past week, um, really extreme allergies. So I'm going to take this time, because my voice isn't exactly back to where I want it to be. So in that case, I don't want to ex overexert it and do more damage to it. Um, so I'm just taking it easy. That's why I'm not really singing today. But I'm going to take this time to express the perils of being a, song, a singer, because it's, people don't really understand how hard it actually is. Um, I mean, people like, you know, when you're a model or something, it's actually a lot harder than it looks. Um, you know, it's, uh, I have a degree in opera and classical music, vocal performance, opera classical music. And 20 years ago, I gave up caffeine because it wasn't good for my voice. So I've made a lot of sacrifices over the years. You know, your teachers always tell you, you know, you can't have this life where I like to party so much in college. And they were like, you can't do that. You know, and I was like, no, I can do it all because when you're young, you don't heed advice and you just do whatever you want. So um, it is really hard. You can't really go to like a lot of loud clubs and bars. That's like extremely bad for your voice. You know, even going to like a restaurant where the music is pumped up really loud. Like we make a lot of sacrifices to sing. We do, we do. I think one of the hardest ones is I was on vocal rest one time, doctor's orders for a week. Have you ever been, like you've been on, it's like, well, first of all, you have to start like, if, this is before text messages, right? So I was really at a loss. I was like having to write things down and like then my roommate started like writing back to me even though he could talk and he was like, I think that, you know, communication would be a lot better because then people would take a lot longer for people to have, if they were pissed off about something and like having to write it out, like why didn't you do this? They would just be like, you know what, screw it. But I actually think like at the end of the day, it's, you know, it could be possibly hurting my relationship status because if you think about it, when I'm on vocal rest, what kind of a man wants to be with a woman who cannot talk? <laughs> That's what I thought. So <laughs> anyway, <I'm laughs> I think there's one back there. Um, yeah. <laughs> So the perils of being a vocalist. Um, we have a very wonderful show for you today. We have Killy Dwyer here. Yeah. <laughs> we also have celebrity chef Emily Peterson is here with us. So without further ado, let me give you a little background on Killy. Um, she has been called many things. Vivacious, sarcastic, Unique, a tiny blonde powerhouse who does an incredible job of balancing smart with funny and catchy. Her essence is that of a punk cabaret performer, a comedian, performance artist, and all-around rock star. Um, who, as it has been said, if you could tap into a fraction of her energy, you could power Vegas for a week. She was a finalist in the 9th and 10th Andy Kaufman Awards and won Frigid's Best Audience Choice Award in 2010 and 2013. We are very honored to have her here with us today. So please welcome Killy Dwyer. It's like a, run, a, a really nice, um, it's really nice to refresh your memory about like all the awesomeness that you are as a person. Um, I am really truly honored and uh, blessed to be here. And um, it's just a, it's a privilege. Um, and a pleasure for you guys to get to see me play. So <laughs> I'm uh, kind of pumped about that. Um, I've been um, I, I've been doing uh, music for a long time, and uh, I, I I decided that I wanted to do some like more educational uh, type stuff. And I felt like like it was important that people you know that my music do something for people. Um, you guys hear that out there? I'm not really, I, I can't really hear myself. Okay, good. Um, I'm gonna trust. Uh, and so I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, kind of educate and, um, and take my music to the next level. And so how many people out there um, know about the clitoris? Yeah. That's good. That's, that's an excellent response. I mean, there, there, are, there are often times where no one, no one, no. No one thought, usually it's in an audience of men. Um, <laughs> They're like, 
and, so, and so here I am to educate you. I'm going to just let the song um, do its thing, which I can't. I'm not, I'm not hearing anything on here. Yeah, I'm not either. Actually, at all. I'm not hearing anything. I'm not hearing anything. That's okay. Um, you know, live. Hey, we're live. Live streaming. Think shit happens. Um, all right. Well, let's try this then. Okay. Well, let's try that. <laughs> you know, it's like it's. I think it's just best to just roll with it. You know. Yeah, I, I hear it now. That's good. I, I like, like a little. Uh, <laughs> That's nice. nice. Yeah. yeah. I think it's going to work out fine. I'm going to need a little more volume. I can do it here, actually. Sorry. I just want to be able to hear myself. That's good. There we go. Yeah, now it's started. See, it's, it's much like sex, you know? You need to get the, like, you need to get into it, you know? You need to make stuff start happening. You need to get down there, get down and dirty, uh, sort of. His story is to blame. You say you never came. You think your lady parts are lame. The clitoris is the only human organ designed purely for her pleasure. Four inches of clit inside your body, a tiny penis that you can't measure. The clitoris, so special and unique. 20,000 nerve endings, it's not the place you pee, but it's real close by. Like a tiny buzzer, ring your bell a bit, ding, ding, and soon you will discover that God wants you to come. 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 Put it in your spank bank. Don't be a stank skank and diddle your fiddle. It's a grand old Ivory. Pick your lima bean and roll, roll your bow. Make your flower grow. Grab that gift, untie that bow because God, I want you to come. 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 Wine. That's the wrong rule for the very last time. God, 
sit in your maps Cause your problems Balls. Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or do you want a brawl? Do you want tears or
crickets and stomach fever too. Flesh eating bacteria and also the swine flu. The mumps and the measles, the clap and the shingles, cancer. I don't, am I, let me just make sure, I just, let me just take, can't, can't, I mean, I mean, we're, actually, I'm not okay, because I am, we, I'm dying, and like, you guys are all dying, I mean, we're all, I mean, oh my god, I heard a bell, <laughs> oh well, you know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Serve me, you go wrong. Please know that I'm not lying. My tumor's just too small to show up on my x ray. I'll go back to the doctor tomorrow, twice the next day. Zack Doc. Zack Doc's right. Zack Doc. 1 800 Venice. Zack Doc. 1 800 We're taking it up. Zack You think I'm crying wolf? You think it's paranoia? I said, I brought you a stool sample, which I seem to annoy I said, please take my blood and a urine sample too. When I feel happy and just fine, I don't know what to do. I said, All right, let's take it all the way down. Let's, this is the moral of the story. This is the whole moral. I'm going to even take that all out. I'm going to take everything out. I'm a hypochondriac. I told you I was dying, and I'm singing to you from my grave. Now, you know that I wasn't lying. Just because you think you're dying don't mean that you're not. It took me 90 years to die from what I got. Natural causes. Thank you. Such a sad song. Thank you. <laughs> It's like a wild ride um, because when I when, when I'm doing what I'm doing, I just, I just want to be able to see your people. Hi guys, hi, I love you guys. Um, oh God, I love, love you so much. Um, I want to do a song about traveling, and I feel like that 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 might be my last song. I, I'm, a, I'm I'm not sure where we are on time, but um, just for now, don't worry, <laughs> don't cry. It's okay. I'll be back. I'll be back. Um, but I did want to do a song about traveling because I do my fair share of traveling in, around the world. I went to Cleveland recently. <laughs> I'm from Ohio. It's like, it's, you know, it's a good place to leave. You know what I'm saying? Hope nobody from Ohio is watching. Um, this is the first song I ever wrote uh, doing the style the, of music that I do now, which is... <laughs> I don't even, what do you call this? I, I have no idea. Punk cabaret, Punk cabaret. yes. I think that's, that's good. Uh, and I'm going to leave it with that. that. Is that all right, right with you, babe? Good old times when pennies were nickels and 
Your nickels were dimes and you tried to act like the end never came But I really couldn't get you out of my brain And I used to love you and you used to love me And then we didn't anymore So we set each other free And it was strange how I ran into you today on the other side of the world. And you told me I turned you gay. I turned, wait, I, wait, I turned you, I turned you gay? I mean, I thought, I mean, I thought that was like a science-y thing, you know? I mean, I thought it was like, um, it's like a hurra, um, her, um, her, it's her, it's like your uncle, yeah. Here's how it went down. You said I turned you gay when I peed on you in our shower. When I picked off your scale and I ate it. When I pooped on her scale and I weighed it. You said I turned you gay. When I pulled my tampon out and I threw it at you. I hadn't shaved for eight years. And I had a jar of wax I collected. Guess where from? My two ears, 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 two ears. You said I turned you gay. When I beat you up, your son of your friend. I would wear underwear. I would only wear deep pants. Well, that deep pants, but your son of 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 your
and hopefully there'll be more survivors than we think. Um, now that I've brought everybody down, <laughs> um, before I introduce our next guest, I want to say I felt a little bit of pressure because I'm a baker, um, and since we moved our show out of our original secret location, I haven't been able to express myself in that realm so easily on the show, but today, I brought a little treat for someone because I was like, well, if there's going to be a chef here, I got to like kind of show off what I do as a baker, right? So um, I have a special treat for everybody that's here that does not have drugs in it. Just I feel like that's a disclaimer <laughs> that I have to put out there because when people say to me, they're like, uh, oh, thanks so much. Is it special? I'm like, no, you'd be paying for that. Um, anyway, so. Let me tell you a little bit about our next guest. Um, as a baker, I'm very excited to welcome our next guest. Chef Emily is a food writer, culinary instructor, and executive chef at Astor Center here in New York City. She is a professor of food studies at NYU and Montclair State University. Her work has been featured on Martha Stewart in the New York Times, The Village Voice, Time Out New York, Huffington Post, CBS, NBC, Fox, Food Network, and Vegetarian Times. She hosts a weekly call-in radio show, Sharp and Hot, on heritageradionetwork.org, and you can find her culinary videos full of very useful tips and tricks on her website. So please put your hands together for celebrity chef Emily. Hi, everybody. OK, a couple of housekeeping things. Kelly, someone in Ohio is listening. Hi, Julie. I'm telling her. Someone in Ohio is listening. She just tweeted me to say, I'm Julie in Ohio is listening. Um, and I, I, so I wrote that intro, and it still sounds impressive. <laughs> like, it's true. Like, you hear someone else tell you about yourself, and you're like, yeah, when you hear it all, this is like that. I, 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 it sounds like I make money. <laughs> Um, so the way that I got the, the job title to be a celebrity chef is that I just started telling people that I'm a celebrity chef. Um, when people ask me what I do, uh, it takes me like five minutes to get through. Oh, well, you know, I teach and I write and I have this radio show. And I, if you just say I'm a celebrity chef, they're like, are you in the Food Network? <laughs> and I was one time. And I feel like that's all I did. I'm like, yes. And then people are like, okay, I know where to compartmentalize you. I understand what you do. I understand that you are who you are. And I don't need to know anything else about it. Because celebrity chefs are where it's at. And I just like jump ship on a career that wasn't going anywhere, landed where I am. So I'm very excited for your, um, for your gift. But I'll, I'll tell you that I came from a very, very long line of cooks. And I have been cooking since I could see over the stove. I, I have very vivid memories of my mom making French toast and standing next to her like this. And her going, not yet. And then eventually uh, she taught me how to make French toast. And then I had this like existential crisis, which is to realize that she wasn't going to cook for me anymore. <laughs> As this like little kid. And I was like, now I'm the cook. And I was like five. It was like the realization that I had reading the cereal box. I remember reading a Cheerios box and realizing that I could read and I would never go back to being able to not read. And that was also, I was like a deep kid. I was a deep kid. And then I grew up and was like, fuck this, we're all gonna die. There's no reason. <laughs> so I might, I know, oh, let me tell you, spoken like a true hypochondriac. Um, I just had all my blood work done and I have high cholesterol. So the doctor said, well, what's your diet like? <laughs> I said, it's great. <laughs> and so everyone's like, well, what are you going to do? And I said, stop going to the doctor. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Nothing was wrong. I just figured, like, I mean, I had a, you know, I had like a spot on my skin, which it turns out is the number one reason people finally go to the doctors, because I wanted to know what that was. I didn't care about my cholesterol, wasn't asking, didn't want to know. Um, so, yeah. So, I uh, grew up in a huge family of cooks. My dad was a hunter. I have, uh, we had rabbits we were allowed to name and rabbits we were not allowed to name. And I, we, he grew our food and they, my parents raised honeybees. He raised chickens. And I have a clear memory of bringing a girlfriend home from school, a friend home from school, and we like, had this long driveway on a flag lot. And um, I could see at the top of the driveway my dad's pickup truck with the tailgate down. She didn't know what we were seeing, but what I was seeing was 
a hundred yellow chicken feet and all of the fluff from the chicken butchery that had happened that my dad didn't clean up in time and didn't know I had a play date. So I had to explain to Amanda, <laughs> Katina, hey, um, sorry, <laughs> what that was about. But her dad was cool because he used to buy us frog dissection kits, so we, we were like, we were like, yeah, we were good spirits. Um, so my dad, being a hunter, used to go out to Pennsylvania Dutch country to hang out with my uncle Jimbo who is a, not a blood relative, but a beloved member of my family. And uh, they would go hunting, and he would come back with something called scrapple. And scrapple is a meat pudding that is formed into a block, and then you slice it and fry it in butter and eat it with maple syrup, and it is phenomenally <laughs> delicious. And it's a little like Spam. It's not as salty as Spam, and it doesn't have ne it has almost no fat in it at all. So as an adult, I decided to set out and answer this question that as a little kid, I would sit at the dining room table, and my dad would come home, and it was like this butcher paper wrap block, and he would thunk it down on the thing and open it. And I would be scarfing it down. And my mother had the reaction that half the population has when you say, do you like sh Scrapple, which is, oh my god. I was like, no, 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 eating it up. And I would say to my dad every single time, like this religious inc incantation, I would say, what's in it? And he would like get all sparkly and he would say, everything but the oink. <laughs> so <laughs> oh as an adult and as a chef and as a food writer, I get paid to answer questions like, what's in it? So I got in my car. And I drove out, to, or I should say, first I called Uncle Jimbo, and I asked Uncle Jimbo where I should go. And <laughs> Uncle Jimbo looks like a garden gnome in the best possible way, uh, without the hat, but with the colorful pants. And <laughs> he was like, okay, you got to go here. This is Dietrich's Meats, and you got to go here, and you have to go here. And this place is gourmet scrapple. And I was like, awesome. And he said, uh, as we got off the phone, he said, and just so you know, www.scrapple.com is available. So if you want to go into business, let me know. And he's got this like big boisterous laugh. And I was like, ha, ah, okay. So I get out the phone and I realize that I'm about to drive into Pennsylvania Dutch country and confront butchers with the question of what's in it. Which I, I like created this worst case scenario, which was it would be large men with knives and white lab coats soaked with blood and they would look at me like I was invading their space. So I'm driving and I get to the first place and I go in and I'm like, I got my notebook. Is there someone I could talk to about um, what's in your scrapple? <laughs> and the woman pulls back this curtain on the butchery room and my worst case scenario is standing right there. So I'm like, okay. So she calls one of the guys forward and she's like, she wants to know about Scrapple. And he's like, well, you cut it about an inch thick and you fry it in butter and you serve it with maple syrup. And I was like, no, no, no. And she, she's like, no, she wants to know what's in it. And he said, well, got to, you know, it's everything that's left on the bones of the pig before, or before the carcass is, you know, done away with. So we take all the beautiful cuts and then we make scrapple out of everything else. We boil the bones, we make a stuff. And he was actually very, very generous with information. I was like, okay. And I was like, I got back in my car and I was like, okay. That was, it was way more intense than I thought it was going to be. So I go to the next place and I, let me pause here and say that as someone who teaches people how to think about food and sort of the critical underpinnings of their decisions, like some people are vegetarians and some people are gluten-free and some people are pescatarians except when there's a really good burger on order and like, you know, like on a particular barbecue that no one's ever gonna know about. Um, <laughs> and so I just want to, I try to like give people the opportunity to really critically think about where they draw their line on the spectrum of will eat and won't eat. And everything, everything's arbitrary. Where you choose to put your line is totally fine. We live in a country where you're free to choose. So I go to the next butcher shop, and I should say I'm pretty far out on the spectrum. I'm like, I'll pretty much eat anything. You put it in front of me, somebody's created it with care, and I will eat it. So I go to the next uh, butcher shop, and it's this um, kind of tourist trap in Pennsylvania Dutch country, 
and you walk in and there's all these like homey pies and cookbooks and history of the area and quilts hanging on the wall. And along the, f the right hand wall of the space, there's all of these jelly jars and it's apricot jelly and peach jelly and um, <laughs> I'm just getting orange fruits are coming here. Blueberry <laughs> and all these like beautiful, lovely things like jewels that are kind of backlit by the sunlight and it's so pastoral. And you walk along the counter and there's a little break and the shelving continues and what I think, what I think is the same stuff. And there's a woman sitting in that little break where the cashier's counter is and her skin and her hair and her glasses and her eyes are all the same pallor gray in a way that I can't, <laughs> she's very unsettling to look at. And I say, do you, do you, uh, you work here? Like, I didn't even know how to approach And she's, I said, what do you want? <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm here because I'm, I'm writing this story about what's in Scrapple. And she says, oh, well, we put in the pork meat and the pork bones, but you know, we don't put any of that gross stuff in. Because there's this perception that it's like brain and liver and kidneys and God only knows what else. And I was like, oh. <sighs> and she says, yeah, no, we save that for pickling. And I realized that this continuation of shelves is not, in fact, strawberry jam anymore. It is pig brains and pig hearts and duck tongues and rabbit esophagus. Oh it is the, like, nothing goes to waste in this community. And I learned where my line on the spectrum yeah. between will eat and won't eat is because um, I walk the walk, you know, like I, I raise my own food now, I raise my own chickens now, and I'm like, you know, people are like, yeah, she's, she's really doing it. She's not just talking about it, she's like doing it. So I'm standing there looking at these jars of pickled pig, then God only knows. And I said, well, how do people eat it? And she, I mean, and I, you know, I'm trying to be sensitive and not insult her, and she said, out of the jar. I was like, well, I kind of figured you didn't need it through the glass, you savages. Um, but like no mustard, no bread. Like I thought, you know, maybe if you like minced it up with a little like pickle or something and smeared it on top. Nope. So I, this is where my only prop comes in. I bought, I bought myself a bottle of pig snouts. This cost $3.25. And theoretically, I'm not going to do it. Don't get your hopes up. Oh, no. I would eat my dog before I ate this. Like, I'm, I'm, and he knows that. No, no, this is where, this is the idea of what that would feel like between my molars. I don't know if, can I, can I hold this up? I don't yes. know if you can get a. Yeah, definitely a close-up. Close 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 you can see it. It's right there. Too close, too close. Too close. Yeah, yeah. Right there. Right there. Pennsylvania Dutch country, this is lunch. This is like you stand at the back of your pickup truck, you crack it open, and you just eat it. So when I um, rail against gluten-free by choice diets, um, self-selected allergies, um, I have, you know, you, uh, I'm gonna, can I horrify the audience? And then I'm not gonna go any deeper, I'm just gonna put a fact out there and let it hang, sharpenhot.com, listen in. Um, you cannot be vegan and also eat organic food. Those two things are impossible, mutually exclusive. I just, I, I just heard the camera gasp. <laughs> because um, the fertilizers that are used to propagate, uh, um, it's blood meal, bone meal, and feather meal that the chemical fertilizers are based on. So the chemical synthesis. Yeah, pretty much. But I'm not going to, I'll let you say that. F vegans are full of shit. I would never say that. Um, but uh, like I said, so there's this willy, won't eat spectrum. And I know where my line is. And so I have to respect everyone's line. It's your own decision to make. And I, you know, I am in the luxurious position of getting to make a living helping people answer those questions. 
So um, there's some paper out in the bar area. If you guys have cooking questions, I know I forgot until just now, um, feel free to write them down and I will answer them. I have a couple in my pocket already. And um, if you are at home listening, you can tweet at Chef Emily P. And if my phone buzzes, I'll pull it out. I'll answer anything, whatever question you have. So far, nothing. I got nothing because it's the first time I said it. <laughs> um, but if you have a cooking question, this is my this is my bread and butter. This is what I do, and I'm just super excited to be here. So thanks for having me. <laughs> I personally don't know anything about what you have there in the jar, but I'm going out on a limb to say that is not kosher. No. no, no, no. So if you are trying to, uh, you know, mom, not going to get you one. So I hope you don't have your hopes up. Um, actually, you know, I was re when I was reading your website, I was like, oh, you know, family comes from like a line of cooks and it's amazing. And um, when I was younger too, like my, I mean, I don't come from a line of cooks, but I will say, state on record that I was raised on the finest and most expensive canned vegetables that money can buy. <laughs> <laughs> I am a dull girl. But um, when I was younger, like, in the morning, I used to pretend my kitchen was a restaurant, and so I would go down in the morning, and I would make menus, and I'd have like my family come down, and I'd set it all up, and like you know, so I think that's how we like carry it on. But one of my questions um, that I had for you, and kind of on the question tip, um, what is one of the funniest, craziest, weirdest questions you've ever gotten? Um. Because my job is to never let anyone feel dumb, you can ask me anything. I will never let you feel dumb. The tagline of my show is I answer home cooks dumb questions because no one ever says, well, no one ever says I've got a great question. No one ever says I have a really smart question. Everyone says I have a really dumb question. And they think that I know everything and I only know a small sliver of very, like my accountant knows how little I know. Um, but. One time, um, there was someone who said to me, I was showing them how to, in a cooking class, I was showing them how to remove the foot from the scallop. Now a scallop, yeah, so a scallop, the muscle that we eat is the adductor muscle that holds the two bivalve shells together and allows the animal to go like so in the water. The whole organism is around that muscle. You know when you have an oyster and you have to cut a muscle? That muscle in the scallop is the thing that we eat. And it has a little piece, a secondary muscle that if you cook it, it gets really tough and not delicious, and that muscle's called the foot. So I've gone through this whole explanation. This is the only reason I will tell this story, because I didn't have someone's full attention. And she said, so I said, you have to go through and make sure you remove all the feed from the scallop. And she said, I will also point out she was really angry that I didn't know that she was a 1990s MTV reality star. So I also feel. What does that even mean? You know, I know. I was like, "You're in the real world." She's like, "No," but she wouldn't tell me what she was on. She was highly offended. So she jumps back into the lesson. Sorry, she's like, "I'm like, I'm a reality star. Everybody Come on." I pull the muscle off and I say, "You have to remove all the feet." And she says, "Wait, wait, 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 wait. Are you telling me scallops have feet?" <laughs> And I'm like, in my head, all I can imagine is like scallops on the floor of the ocean, like walking around in like little fundy shoes or like whatever it is. And I was like, no, yeah, no, nope, they don't. So that's, that's sort of my go-to, like what's the dumbest thing you've ever been asked? But most people's questions are real, are like really good. Like, are you supposed to salt the water before or after it comes to a boil for pasta? Do you know the answer? I think it's before, but I could be wrong. It's pick one and stick with it. So you never wonder did I salt the water? Right. So if you always do it before, you know. If you always do it after, you know. Yeah. If you go back and forth. Memory, like you know that when right. you put the pot on, turn it on, put the salt in. Precisely. Or, oh, it's boiling. Yep. Put the salt or on. when it's boiling, your fingers have a lot of um, capacity to withstand pain. I can't feel anything to my elbows anymore, but you can just touch the water and lick oh. it and be like, oh, it's salty. I already did that. That's usually how I remember how to do it, if I salted it. Or That's not. funny. I used to work at a Chinese restaurant in college, and um, he had no feeling in his hand, yeah. so after he was done with the wok, he would like put the water in and use his hands oh my God. to be like cleaning it out, and then he would like dump it. Because it's so much faster if you don't feel pain. Yeah, if you have to go and get something, then it's like, oh, you have to go. So you just train right. yourself to like yeah. deal with pain, and there's a threshold. Matter. Yep. I mean, I. Chefs are like hardcore. I know. You know what? Let's test this out. Who's got a candle? Come on. Uh, 
minutes, you guys. So I, I see that we have some questions. Yes. Should we, we answer them questions. now? Should we like you want to wait till the end? How do you want? We should answer now. Um. Why don't we answer some notes? Oh. Answer now. Have you eaten peacock? Peck? Nope. I don't know. If you've never, if you've never heard of it, then have you eaten pacha? Pacha? No. Pacha. What is it? Then, then we'll, let's, I'll save it for another episode of your show. All right. Perfect. Um, I am going to have my my friend is bringing a can of the Swedish national food, which is fermented fish in a can. It's called. Like the filter. It's, yeah, the filter. It's, and then the more the can swells, the better it's going to be. You eat it in Sweden in the spring outside because it's so horrific. Yeah. Oh, May second. Come out to the fire. Okay. Let's see. Oh, sex and food do tell lobster. Okay, I've never actually brought a lobster into the bedroom. But food can be, like, super sexy. Like, even just the act of, like, cooking next to someone and, like, you're oh. in the same space and you're, like, brushing up yeah. against each other. Oh like, I know you're, you're, you're like, getting turned on right now. Because I was thinking of an experience. I was uh, grocery shopping with a guy one time. And was it, what? Because <laughs> we were actually at a Is this deli. Really no, I said that because we weren't at, like, Christides. We were at, like, the deli around the corner from right at the bodega. And um, we were walking around, and I went to pick up a cucumber. He was not from this country. He goes, you know, in my country, we eat those. <laughs> and I was like, that was funny, because I didn't think he had much of a personality. But then he said that, and I was like, wow, maybe I should rethink that, you know? Are you still together? No, he lives in a different country. Oh, well. And I should have gone with the cucumber. <laughs> I will tell you that I fell in love with my husband at the farmer's market. Aww. He took me to, I had not gone to culinary school. I was a teacher, at a, a, pre, a middle school teacher in Bed-Stuy, and he took me on this date to the farmer's market and introduced me, like he knew all the farmers, and he bought, all, he like knew this mushroom farmer and picked out all these mushrooms and made me this That's incredible dinner. I called my mom the next morning and I was like, I'm gonna marry this guy. Aww. Love you. Now, the, the microwave is actually a good place for fish, but I would encourage you to use parchment paper and not plastic. No, it, but you bought it in the plastic pouch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was like, no. Oh, the, the state of our, yeah. Um, okay, so what is the key to hard boiled eggs? I have it. I have, this Ooh, is perfect. So the perfect recipe. I need to brace myself. You want to hear a quick story first? Yes. <laughs> so on my radio show, I get asked this question about cooking eggs a lot. How do you poach eggs? How do you soft boil eggs? How do you hard boil eggs? Hard boiled eggs is by far and away the question I get asked the most. So I have a friend who happens to be the executive chef at Per Se, which is Thomas Keller's restaurant in New I York City. Like Did you? I've never been. <laughs> is it incredible? It was pretty, yeah, I think it was probably the best meal I ever had in my life. It's like theater, right? It's like food theater. Yeah, it was a four hour meal. It's an event. It was. So Eli is the executive chef, and I called him and I said, would you come on my radio show and answer this question? He's very, in he's just as intense as you would imagine. He's this very tall, I think Eastern European born man. And he sits, he, I said, how do you hard boiled eggs? And he says, we don't. And I was like, well, what, I mean, you, he's like, we, they crack the eggs, they separate the yolk from the, uh, the uh, white, then they spoon the white into egg-shaped molds, silicon what? molds, and wow. bake them until they're set, and then pop them out, and you have perfect little eggs. And then they take the yolk, season it however they want, and then sous vide it at per se, but you could just put it into a Ziploc baggie into a, a pot of simmering water until they set, and then put it in the food processor or just like mix it up with some mayo and flavor. I was like, no, cheating, yeah. no, so cheating. Like, Do you want to solve a problem? <laughs> Get rid of the problem. Brilliant, right? I, Eli, full credit, probably maybe Tom TK before that. We're wow. like we're like this. Um, so if you are not, if you don't have a silicon mold or you don't have time to, you know, do because it is kind of a little bit more of a process. You put your eggs into a pot of water, cold tap water with some salt and a little um, vinegar, and the vinegar will help oh, with the eggs. It'll, if the egg should crack, it'll prevent the white from spilling out all over. It'll hold the white together. Um, and then you bring it to a rolling boil over high heat, 
as soon as it's a rolling boil, not a simmer, turn off the heat, put a lid on it, let them sit for nine minutes. Done. Perfect. No green, no green ring. Delicious, fudgy all the way through. Perfect. Nice. Yep. Okay, peeling. So there, there are a million methods out there. Like if you add baking soda, if you do this, if you do that, they should be old. They shouldn't be old. I've tried every single, it doesn't matter. I can't, I can't, the only way I can guarantee that the egg will peel perfectly is to separate it before you cook it and use a silicone mold. Do we have time for one more? Um, you mentioned frog dissection kit. Do you like frog legs and how do you prepare? I've eaten frog legs once and I was uh, on a family vacation along with my aunt and uncle as the nanny of their two slightly younger children and my uncle ordered them deep fried and they are like chicken wings. So, so, so delicious. Chicken. Tastes like chicken. They were delicious. And the crazy thing is that they, it's just half a frog. Oh. It's like frog legs. There's nothing, uh, but I would totally eat that again. Pig snouts, no. Frog legs, yes. Yeah, I, I would say deep fried. Kermie, not piggy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, pretty much. And Kermie's lower half, not Kermie's, up, not his face. I don't want to eat Kermie's face. <laughs> I do have like one question, and I love asking this to people who are like in the kitchen. Um, what if you could only have? Well, this is like hypothetical, right? Because you wouldn't ever just have one thing in the kitchen, like your favorite, um, like a tool? tool, your favorite kitchen tool, or you know, my knife. So if I didn't, yeah, if I didn't have my knife, I could have the best of everything else and be effed. What about um, as far as like a food processor, a steamer, or this or that? Like if you had um, one hmm. toaster oven, I don't know. I'm trying to Ooh, find toaster it. oven's good. Uh, oh, I really? I could not live without my steamer. I think that is like a perfect key thing to have in your kitchen. I, I love to steam. I think a really high quality, um, there's a company you want to hit me up for a sponsorship, I tell everyone. It's called ScanPan. They are Dutch, and they have made this uh, adenized aluminum pan that doesn't have any coating in it that's completely non-stick. I cook everything. You can cook, fry an egg in it with no fat. Nothing. Not that you would ever want to, but just I just did to see if it was true. Nothing. And it caramelizes things beautifully. You can like roast Brussels sprouts. It goes straight from the stove into the oven, into the sink, into the wash, in the dishwasher. Oh too? God, I might have a human being. I might have a dishwasher. That's the thing I can't live without. Oh. Yeah, I want a human being who's gonna do all my dishes. That's my tool I can't do. Eh. <laughs> no, sorry baby. Uh, it's not a strong suit. I have a dishwasher <laughs> and I told, my, I told my landlord, I was like, you know what? I don't even actually need it. Cause when you have, I don't know, it's like it would take like two weeks for us to fill up the dishwasher. No, just run it, just run it. You, it uses so less like water. <laughs> run it anyway. Use it. Run it every three days. It uses less water to run the dishwasher than it does to hand wash a, a meal's worth of dishes. Because it's just using the same water. Good to know. I'm yeah. gonna start using Use it. Now. Think of Chef Emily every time you do. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you so Thank you. much. All right. So, <laughs> so we also have a segment on the show. It's called How to Get Out of Your Family's Will. Because <laughs> um, I'm really, really good at it. And um, <clears throat> this last Monday was my grandparents' 68th anniversary. And um, which is like really, I think that's like amazing because you know, people don't really stay together that long anymore. Like I'm not even gonna have a chance to be with anybody that long. Um, so I called her to wish her a happy anniversary. And um, they're like older, you know, like 39. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, like, I'm already, like, out of the will, but if I told you her real age, I would definitely be disowned, so she's 39. Um, but I was speaking to her on the phone, and we talk and talk and talk, and then I said, well, you know, where's Grandpa? And she said, oh, you know, he's in the other room sitting at his desk, which was funny because I swear to God, every single time I've talked to her my entire life, he's always watching Judge Judy. <laughs> um, but he was like, you know, he's always at his desk, and so at his desk, I was like, oh, that's where the computer is. And by the way, even though there are 39 plus, they're very techno savvy. So she says, you know, he's, in, he's there. He's like on, you know, sitting at his desk. He's always at his desk. And I was like, you just gotta better go in there and get him and tell him stop looking at so much porn. And I was like, ha ha, you know, and then she didn't say anything. So I was like, well, you know, she's older, she's got a hearing aid, you know, she didn't hear me. But I thought I was like really funny and cheeky, so I was like, well, maybe you should go in there and get him and tell him to stop watching so much porn. And she was like, 
Yeah, I heard you the first time. <laughs> so I was like, wow. The old people, I don't, I will say that, like, I'm already out of the family. I did find Playboys, like, when I was much, much, much younger, but I was like, so, technology, it's great, isn't it? My mom told me the one I found was a collector's item. That's what my dad Oh, I bet all 208 of the ones I found were, they were all collector's items, I'm pretty sure. I can leave that until just right now. I'm just <laughs> Sorry to ruin that for you. Um... Oh, I wanted to talk about what I made, and so you guys, I decided that when life hands you lemons, you make lemon poppy bread. Yay. So that is what I have for you all sitting over here that you guys can all taste. Um, but another thing that we do during our show is I'm going to invite Killy back up and Emily, because um, we really like to get into the mind of our artists and our interesting friends to see what makes them tick, and they always have great tips for us, um, you know, artists outside. So come on back up, ladies. Um, actually, because when I did talk to you just a little bit, I actually had some questions for you, Kelly, very first before we uh, get questions. into it. Questions. Questions. So, were you, did you, would you consider yourself first a comedian or first a musician? A musician. A musician. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I don't know. Comedian to me is sort of a dirty word in a sense. Um, uh, it's, that's a whole, I don't know, that's a whole thing I'm not sure I want to get into because I, Comedians are, are, are hardcore, and they're they are. and they're and they are vicious to an extent. And um, uh, it, it, I, I really it's like a mafia type thing. You're like, <laughs> I really don't want to say anything bad about comedians because you know, but they're like they're a pretty intense group. Uh, I think they're probably the most fucked up of all the artists. Oh yeah, yeah. That's Followed by musicians, I would think. Uh, I'm now everyone in Ohio and all comedians hate me, so I'm just. <laughs> Pretty much at this point. <laughs> hey, Ohio! They're, they're like, you're dead to us. Um, no, but I love comedy, and I just, I, I like, I have, a, I have a real love for dark comedy, and that tends to not really be a stand-up type thing. I mean, it can be, uh, but it lends, I think it lends itself better, and actually I consider myself more of a musical theater performance artist so than punk anything cabaret, else. That was a good description of you. Yeah, it was perfect. <laughs> nice. And so what was the first instrument that you picked up? Um, the first instrument my parents made me learn, uh, well, they asked me what I wanted to learn because it was important to learn an instrument in the house. And I, I picked a piano. Nice. Um, but I, I really just hated practicing. Um, and I really enjoyed singing more. And I got into... Um, I did You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. I was Sally. I was in that good, musical. Was I like Sally or grade. Patty? I can't, right now I can't remember. Um, I'm sorry, I'm a little hungover. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I don't want to lie to the people out the there. The camera doesn't lie. But Saturday night happens in New York City, and then <laughs> Sunday brunch happens, and things happen. Um, but yeah, I did You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, and that was like, I was like, Wow, this is like everything. So this is everything. Yeah, yeah. So that was, I guess, somewhere between piano and vocals, because I do consider this an instrument. It's you talked about, and a very delicate, fragile instrument. In fact, I, I did the same thing. I had to be on vo a vocal rest, but for four weeks, for oh four my. weeks, I was on vocal yeah. rest. So. Um, Do you know what? This is what I realized after being on vocal rest that long. There's so many things that we like just don't need to say. <laughs> so true. Honestly. So true. My husband said the same thing. <laughs> I bet he did. It's like the guy. Yeah, I was. He's like, remember that last time. week when we were talking? Yeah, you didn't even say any of that. <laughs> I got really good at. I did have texting though, which you didn't. Oh, yeah, see, yeah. I didn't have that. So I had my phone, um, and it was so like. You know, emotional emotions are something that if, though, I believe that if you cannot vocalize those, if you cannot cry or if you cannot sometimes yell or talk things through, that it can, it can actually re represent even more tension oh, yeah. within your spine and in your neck. And so I found that I was like, text, the way that I would text an argument was like, I was like... <laughs> <laughs> like my whole, the rest of my entire Everything body, rather than it. screaming, turned into this like I don't. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like a monster, and um, well, it was good times, it was good times. But I haven't had too much trouble uh, with my voice since then, because I do warm up all the time, and I try yeah, to take nice. good care of it, except for all the booze and cigarettes. 
other than that. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure that I'm like the favorite singer of my building when I warm up every morning. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. They love that. They yeah. Like shower warm up. A shower. I make sure to like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, shower, great. kitchen, the back of the house. I make sure that like every part of the apartment, like nobody's left out downstairs, upstairs. I'm also pretty sure I'm their favorite DJ when I have like my own dance parties and my pretty sure. I'm gonna send like a blind ballot out just to be like, who's your favorite DJ on our block? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's me. Um, anyway, so I do have some questions for you all. Don't worry, it was nothing you could study for. Um, I will ask you like four questions, three that are like real questions and some that I made up. You can't, can you guys hear me out there? Okay. Oh, okay, cool. So. If you would like to start, I'm going to ask you both the same questions, and if we will pick numbers 1 through 18. Ooh. Sounds, this sounds daunting. It's really... Can pick a number? Well, so, well, you can pick one first, or she can pick one first. I'm going to pick number 9. 9. Number 9. Number 9. Number 9. Number nine. All right. It's a good song. What is your most persistent distraction, and how do you keep it in check? Oh, my gosh. My most persistent uh, distraction, I feel like I'm like um, Miss, on the Miss America pageant. My yes. most persistent distraction in life would be Facebook. Um, totally Facebook, it's definitely the devil. Facebook. Um, I am. Uh, How I do you know. keep it in check? I <laughs> get off Facebook. Does anybody have any Facebook pointers? There, yeah. is, uh, there is an app. Uh, I have used that, and uh, I. I just went to another computer. I was just like, I... <laughs> I need to check my status right now. Yeah. How many people liked it? Come and on. And I do a lot of work on my computer. I mean, I, I, you know, most people work on a computer now. I mean, you right. know, I, I write songs on there. I do, you know, I am constantly around it. So I'm like, I'll just pop over. Four, four hours, hours later, later you're like, I'm oh like, oh no, what happened to my life? <laughs> exactly. I'm 40. What happened? <laughs> Where did everything go? I, exactly. But I bet post on that I made on Facebook got like 17 likes. That's my dog is awesome. like super famous on Facebook too. So. Monkey? Yeah, Monkey, my dog. I know your so dog. Yeah, she's like. We're she's Facebook friends, I think. Yeah. Hello. Oh, see, that's the thing. <laughs> she's a superstar. I am just along for the ride. Yeah, really, I know, you're riding her dog tails. <laughs> Does she answer that question? Yes, please. Same, the same question. Yes, I can repeat it. Um, what is your most persistent distraction and how do you keep it in check? Um, see, and this whole time I was like, yeah, I would have said Facebook, but also I have a toddler. You should get so rid of them. <laughs> I, I thought for a really, really long time I wanted to have two kids, and I was like bent on having two kids, and we were going to have two, and they were going to be close to get. Fuck that. Yeah. No way. About two weeks ago, I said to my husband, like, what if we just took the pressure off? because he's two and a half now, so I'm like, you know, we want to be close together, tick tock, tick tock. And I was like, great, and then I said, what do we do? And he was like, yeah, that'd be okay. My life has improved a hundredfold, just without the like pressure of how are we, he doesn't sleep through the night and he poops in diapers like four times a day. Yeah. <laughs> That's really distracting. And when I was. <laughs> <laughs> How do you keep that in check? I put him in preschool. Nice. Oh, that's a good so way to solve that. I got to two and a half at a two and a half plus one day. <laughs> You're like, oh, look, it's time yeah. to go to school. Oh, they open at 7 a.m.? We're there. We're there. They're like waiting at the door. Oh. There's a line. And he's all the he parents. He's it like a duck to a pond. He's fine. I, like, I, I, there was a moment where I thought, like, oh, am I like, missing his child? No, not even a little. They, have, they were like, like um, can you come get food? your son? He's been here since Tuesday. It's Friday. <laughs> Hello? Like, I'm just trying to finish this. I just have one more book proposal. I'm on one Facebook. One more book proposal. <laughs> <laughs> you got it right. Exactly. Um, would you like to pick the next number? You pick nine. I'll pick six. Perfect. Can you recall any specific times you ever asked for help? I ask for help all of the time. I got really comfortable with not faking it. And if I need help, I'm like, I don't know how to do this. Even when it comes to cooking, like there are recipes that my students will be cooking at NYU. Maybe I shouldn't say this. I love you guys. Um, <laughs> I've never cooked them before. And they're like, is this what this is supposed to look like? I'm like, I have no idea. Let me go ask for help. Let me let's, ask somebody who's done it. Let's Google it. Right. And it's like, how do you, 
how do you write a book proposal? I don't know. Let me ask someone. How do you tell a story? I don't know. Let me ask somebody. That, like, getting over your ego of, like, you have to know everything, that's so exhausting. Yeah. Like, there's, there's stuff that I know, and I know that I know, and I don't like it when someone tells me that I'm wrong when I know I'm right. Right. But of I course. have no problem being like, I have no idea how to do this. Can you help me? And almost, like, to the point of being annoying, I think. <laughs> I'm like, could you, could you explain this to me? I explained it to you last week. I know, but it's still not working. So, I, like, the engineer of my radio show, I think I border on, like, annoying him. But he's great. So <laughs> That's all good. Okay, yeah. oh. Do you want me to repeat it for you? Yes. Can you recall any specific times you asked for help besides me asking you if you needed that question repeated? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, whoo, I am not good at asking for help. Um, yeah, me either. I am... Do- I, oh, that's, that's tough for me. I guess my... You know, my husband is my, is the person that I am most confident and most, I feel safest asking for help. Sure. Um, with, because I, I, sometimes I feel, especially as a woman, that there's some judgment if you can't, like, we have to be able to do everything, everything. in life and, like, do it well and, you it's know, and then you have, like, the bottle of white wine hidden under the bed. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, everything. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, my husband is, is just like, he is my rock and he is the person that I ask for help. So, um, I don't know if that exactly answers the question, but it, you know, I just ask him and he's like, uh, he's a helpful guy. That's good. At least you have someone to turn to. He's my one. He's my person. Yeah, definitely. All the people I usually ask for, I'm like, oh, their phone, no one's answering. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, the number changed. (laughs) Oh, that person died. We were just talking about that last night, and I had a bunch of people were like, oh, Kelly, you're the person that we call for help. And I'm like, that's why I have so many missed calls. (laughs) (laughs) Great. All those people are no longer with us. I feel sad. (laughs) That was her last resort. (laughs) Aw. I let it go straight to voicemail. (laughs) This is my last Let's call, Killy. Help. <laughs> um, would you like to pick another number? Um, I will pick uh, sixteen. Great. How do you keep focused on a goal? Um, I don't. All right. Thank you. And Emily, I don't. I mean, I, I, you know, I mean, in, I, I guess I look at the long. There's a long picture, of course, that is the main goal, but there's so many goals in a day, right. especially now that we multitask so much. Like, I am writing a song, I am uh, doing social networking, I am emailing for gigs, I am, you know, t- petting my dog. God I, wants you to come. There's so many things. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> yes, I'm <laughs> masturbating uh, four <laughs> to eight times a day. I mean, it's, you know, um, it's a multitasking thing. So I think the goal is to just, you know, like then I'm in the bathroom and I'm like putting laundry and I'm like, what was I, where? Yeah. Was I? <laughs> oh yeah, I was writing a song. So then I come back around and then I circle back through and somehow it, that works for me. You know, I, I don't think that works for everyone. But my brain has about 50,000 thoughts Yeah, happening. I'm right and there with you. I'm not just constantly, like, doing 60 things, like, I don't feel... I guess that's my goal, is just to, like, constantly do, you know, a yes. bunch of different things at once. Absolutely. I have that same thing. Yeah. And I'm constantly doing things, and, like, I'll... Particularly if I'm cooking for a gig, and then I'll, like, get to a point in the kitchen where I'm like, I was on my way to do something important. What was I going to oh do? Oh, God. <laughs> because one, one misstep, and it can just be everything's off the rails. Um, Toddler, Facebook, which one? Right. Was it Toddler or Facebook, or was it that risotto? Fuck, I don't remember. <laughs> um, where's James? Where's the baby? Um, I, so in the like, long-term goal life, I really want to be on TV. Nice. And when I tell people that, Good step forward there. <laughs> they look at me like I'm crazy. Like, <laughs> like I'm delusional or deluded. Really? And nice. what I have realized is that no one, it's the same thing with telling everyone, you know, just saying I'm a celebrity chef on the thing <laughs> to get it printed on a name tag at a, an event. No one's going to come, when you work for yourself, no one's going to come from downstairs and tell you what your title is. You just do it. Right. So we used to joke that, um, my husband and I used to joke that um, one day, one day, everything's going to be all right. One day, the Food Network's going to call. And we'd be like, ha, ha, And people around us would be like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> And then one day, they called. Nice. 
So I said, who did that word called? He was like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm literally not kidding. And that's how I got to be on Cutthroat Kitchen, which was amazing. So now I was like, okay, heard. I'm going to make that Rachel Ray money. Yeah. Heck yeah. And yeah. Hey, it's going to happen. And I, I can only believe that that's true because what's the alternative? If that's your goal and you say, no, it's probably not going to happen, I might as well go find a cubicle, you know, and I just can't do that. So my I brother you. has a really good, my brother says, you, you know, get knocked down seven times, you're the one who gets up eight. And that's, it's so just like, just get up eight. And now we'll just like text each other, like, get up eight. Nice. And that, so that's our like mantra. Ah, hey, I love it. <laughs> oh, number. Who's ter- uh, yeah, but this, this is number? different now because... I have questions that I wrote, okay. and they're way much harder than these other ones. Um, and it's 1 through 13. So, who is, the, is it your turn to pick a number? One. If you were an element on the periodic table, what would you be? Oh, God. <laughs> so, science is not my strongest. Salt. How about salt? I know that that is an <laughs> element. That is a compound. I knew that. Well, I also <laughs> failed chemistry, oh, so... Okay, no, yeah. I, yes, I would be... Let, but we'll go with it. I would be salt. I would be N-A-C-L, which is... Combination. Something chloride. Sodium. It's sodium chloride. <laughs> I would be sodium chloride. I actually um, nice. wanted... I don't have any tattoos. My fear is that I will become someone who is photographed for having all of the tattoos uh, if I get one. So I haven't broken the seal on that, but I was going to get a salt molecule tattooed on me somewhere, and I realized, I learned that it's not a molecule. It is like a suspension, or someone explained it to me, and it was like, oh, well, fuck that. There goes that. (laughs) You're like, that whole table I got with that one highlight, it's not there. (laughs) No, I was going to say, I was going to sound like ethereal and say oxygen. I a lot of air. Okay, oh, uh. <laughs> I was like, hmm, okay. <laughs> Top line, line, what was on there? I can think of, and then use a, you know. Sorry, I yeah, I'm just not, I'm not a, yeah, I'm not a periodic. I, the All right, periodic I can ask table. a different question. Yeah. If you were a spice, what would you be? Not a spice girl, an actual spice. <laughs> oh my gosh, you have to go first. <laughs> Um, I, my, I know. this is my wheelhouse. I'm, I'm literally imagining my cupboard at home in which there are many spices. Um, side note, you should throw them away every six months and replenish them. They lose their volatility. The oils lose their volatility. I would be something versatile between sweet and savory. So I would go with nutmeg. Oh, that that's is one, one that lasts forever. If you get in its whole form, you can use it in sweet applications, in curry, and it nice. is very reminiscent of a particular cocktail called a painkiller that holds a special place in my heart. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take two painkillers. Can we get two painkillers back here, bartender? Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, I guess, I mean, I think that I would want to be a very useful um, uh, spice that, uh, that could be used in many, many different things. And, and um, I love black pepper, and mm. I just feel like that's, you know, I probably use that a lot. Salt and black pepper, are obviously. Yeah, basics. Season your food, people, as I'm sure you know. Um, but yeah, black pepper is my is my my jam. Your jam, right there. Yeah, once you go nice. black pepper. <laughs> yeah, like a peppercorn where you're. Oh, I go grind. She grinds. I'm a grinder. She grinds that shit. I love all <laughs> kinds of pepper, but black is you know it's just the. But you have something against white pepper? Sweet is that pork. what it is? I'm, you know, I'm not prejudiced. <laughs> Um, White pepper matters. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I think on that, that note, we will. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> it is really good if you do switch it up with the white vinegar. And we won't go there. But anyway, thank you ladies so much for your insight. It's chilly in here. It's chilly in here. It's a tinkle. All right. Well, I just want to take a moment. So the people that have joined us, um, you are watching Ms. Stephanie's House Live because it says so on that sign. Um, you can find us online at MissStephaniesHouse.com. You can, if you have any other questions um, for Emily, you can reach her at uh, SharpenHot.com. Is that the best place, or I had your actual website? Um, SharpenHot.com or SharpenEmilyPeterson.com. Um, All right. Can I put a plug in for Heritage Radio Network? Yeah, yeah of course. We are uh, 40, I think we're up to 42 weekly half-hour shows all about food and cooking, and we're 
be broadcast out of Bushwick. My show's on oh, live nice. at 2 on Tuesdays. Everything's available as a podcast, and we're in the middle of a Kickstarter campaign to build our new website, which will be our storefront to the world. Oh, Five awesome. bucks helps, you guys. So that's heritageradionetwork.org? Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. I think or .com. I think either one. Heritage oh. If you just go to Heritage Radio Network, you will get there. And we are not related to the other heritage like crazy neocon right wing stuff that <laughs> someone tried to book me on one of those shows and I was like I no, think this I is a different that. heritage you haven't seen my website okay <laughs> <laughs> nice um, and I want to just say okay so your website yeah. okay Um oh I wanted to show your really cool or if it's easier to remember Killy the kid K-I-L-L-Y the kid Paper dollies. paper dollies. Yeah, that's my merch. I have paper ones and I have magnetic ones that you can put on your so refrigerator and defile at, as, yeah, at, as you wish. As you wish. <laughs> I, I, I've had people, a lot of people send me photos of like what they've done with me. I'm just like, oh my gosh. I know what I've gotten myself into. Nice. It's always exciting though. Perfect. All right, we're going to clear off. Well, oh, so Kel Kelly's got another set. Yeah. Um, so I do want to say, do, do, do. Oh, do you want this? We're going to play musical chairs now, so. <laughs> Wait, I want to say, because are you are you doing my favorite song in this set? Um, I, gosh, I don't think I remember all the words. Yeah, sure, if you want me to. Okay, well, this is a very important song, another PSA, something that's very close to my heart and my mouth, and she has done a song about something that is very important to me, flossing. None of you people back there know me, but I want everyone to know that I am anal about oral hygiene. And one of the most disappointing times in my life is when I had come back from Europe and for like five days straight, I forgot to pick up floss. And I was really mental over it. Like I was like the next morning, I'm like, oh my teeth, it just feels so... Anyway, more people need to floss. I need to stop dating less guys from England. And she has written a song about that that she's going to do. And we also have, I don't know where it is. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to, oh, we have an email list, sorry. Scattered. And tips for the performers. Um, we had a hat somewhere, but I guess it's gone. Anyway, without further ado, please put your hands together and welcome back Killy Dwyer. Okay, well, I was, I think I'm going to do, I, maybe I'll save Floss Boss for like the big finale, although there is a child here and it is a very child friendly song. Because um, last comic, or not last comic saying, um, America's Got Talent um, wanted me to write a, a, a family friendly song, and so I wrote Floss Boss. That's where I, and I'm also very passionate about flossing. I mean, I'm very, very passionate. Um, I, when I was young, when I was, uh, when I first started recognizing, you know, music and w uh, thinking about music, um, I, I would hear patterns because I'm bipolar and um, uh, one of the things that happens to me is that I, I pretty much, can, I hear everything all the time at once and I pick out little pieces that are like patterns, you know, like, um, this one is, uh, I, that was la that was the last song. That was beautiful. Um, I, you guys know the British like um, it's like the British ambulance. Dee, 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 dee. You know, okay, so that one got stuck in my head, and I wanted to write a love song. Um, I wanted to write a love song, and so this is this is a love song based off that a British ambulance sound <laughs> about cloning. Okay. Just a little guitar. It's like a nice 
nice little, I'm going to improvise some of this. So. And a drunk dumb a dad You know the three is company When one of you is dumping me The other two can comfort me just made my own self cry. <laughs> that's like, that's so cool. Um, I, I think it is. I think it's really cool. Um, so I need, um, for the next song, this is kind of exciting, I need two audience volunteers. So you'll do. And young lady, would you like to come up as well? Um, I haven't done this song in a while, but... Uh, Go right over here, sir. What's your name? Brett. Mark. Um, <laughs> and a lovely lady, what is your name? Oh, careful. Watch out. 
We'll call you, then we'll call you Jill. Um, Mark and Jill. Okay, well this, you're gonna, you don't, don't worry, don't panic. Uh, there's no need to uh, be afraid in any way, shape, or form. Don't, don't worry about it, I promise. Okay, that's gonna be great. Okay, hold on, just hold there, stay there. Margaret, right? It's Margaret. Uh, you hold this. Okay. This is called teamwork. Uh, this is called me asking for help, I guess. This is, this is the time where we're going to do that. So you guys are my helpers. And uh, let's just, it's really, this song is all about uh, me uh, having, trying to make, you guys try, trying to make it as easy for, for me as possible not to mess this up. In fact, you come around here, right? Like that. That's good. You're good there. Uh, this is my sight line to the camera. Don't want the people to stop. All right, let's, uh, all right, how's that sound out there? I need it a little louder myself. All right, you guys ever have, do you guys have a Casio SK when you were kids? I mean, come on, 1980s, that stuff's awesome. Did you think I'd be a total bitch when you met me? Did you fear our first encounter at the bar? Did you say, hey, is everything all right with you? Or was that subtle road rage back there in the car? Bitchy, 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 resting face. Face. Bitchy, 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 resting face. like Sally Jesse Raphael was here. Um, <laughs> special guest. Um, hey, can you let me know if you have one more song? Yeah, sure. Uh, how, like, how, how are we doing on time? One more song. One more song. Okay. Sure. I want to thank everybody for coming out and thank everybody for tuning in. I want to thank sisters for letting us uh, do our show here. 
Um, thank you, whoa, thank you to everybody in the front of the restaurant. Um, thank you to Sean, Micah, and Ed, of course. And of course, Killy Dwyer. Yay. And Emily Peterson, thank you both for coming out today. You can always find us online at www.mizstephaniehouse.com. Our next show is next Sunday, May 3rd. We have a great lineup. Um, so please tune in. So I'm going to let Kelly do her thing and get us out of here. Thank you. All right, girls. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, as you guys know, this was a request um, uh, from uh, the lovely Miss Stephanie. So, um, uh, you know, it's got a lot of words. We'll see how it goes. Oh, yeah. Something stuck up in my grill. Chill. I got floss, boss. It's 2 30. Come on, bounce. Bounce with me. Since I was a kid, my melon was filled with dread that my teeth would all fall out of my pretty little head. Thrice on the daily, I clean my potty mouth hole. It's the yap that I trap food in. Kiss, sweating, blow hole, floss. Provence gum disease and two floss, floss. Show your teeth who is a floss, boss. I want to chew my cut till my dying breath. Eating hardcore foods till my hardcore death. One time I couldn't find any floss to floss my teeth with, so I pulled out Steph's hair and I flossed with it, bitch, floss! Present from the season two, floss, floss. Show your teeth who is the floss, floss. This is where I dance around in the tooth costume usually. I usually wear a whole tooth costume, it's a thing. I'm trying to be serious today though. Mouth smells like farts. Flossing isn't easy, it's a mother flossing art. Gotta ease that thread between your teeth and clean up and down. While curving floss around the teeth, the gum lines in the crown. Floss, Provence gum disease and tooth loss. Floss, show your teeth who is the boss. Floss, treat your teeth good and between your teeth better, or you'll end up flossing under your dentures with a floss threader. Or even worse, now listen to your mentor. Don't end up like your grandma and end up with dentures. Floss, puffins, gum disease, and tooth loss. Floss, show your teeth who is the floss boss. <laughs> wow, I got through most of the words on that. So I just want to thank Seventy one more time, and this has been really, really fun. And goodbye, so long, farewell. I'm going to get drunk. <laughs>